Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part eight, where we're gonna be talking about the backup and restore module. Very, very, very important setup backups in Free PBX. Now, the way that I'm gonna be doing backups in this video is with a local backup. So backup that is stored on the Free PBX server itself. But in production, that is not good enough. You're also gonna to wanna to set up a remote backup to an FTP server or Dropbox or Amazon S3. We're gonna talk about all of that stuff in this video. But first, if you guys enjoy this content, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos just like this one. It's absolutely free and it really, really helps the channel. Also, follow Crosstalk Solutions on Twitter at CrosstalkSOL, and if you guys are interested in just buying me a beer, there's a link down below to do that as well. Okay, hopping right into it, here we are at the free PBX dashboard, and there are two parts to a backup and restore. There's the actual backup and restore module, and then there's the file store. And file store is basically us telling the PBX where files can be located. So let's go check out the file store first. Again, you can type file store up here in the contextual search, or it's also located under settings and then file store right here. In a move that boggles the mind, Sangoma does not include any sort of default backups. Now they used to, but for some reason, they removed that at some point and it has not yet made its way back into free PBX. Absolutely astounding. They should at least have a local file store location for your backups and a default backup that stores, you know, monthly or something to that local file store. But since they don't include that, we need to set everything up ourselves. Okay, so here is the file store and within the file store, we have different tabs for different locations that can be set up. So for instance, FTP. Local, local is for our local machine. That's what we're gonna be doing in this video. Dropbox, SSH, now SSH, you say why an SSH server? Well, that's actually used for when you set up free PBX in a primary slash warm spare configuration, which we're not gonna be doing as part of this video tutorial series, but we do do that for clients on a fairly regular basis. So if you're interested in how to get that set up, contact Crosstalk Solutions and we can certainly help you out. Finally, there's also an S3 bucket, which is Amazon AWS storage. Okay, so let's click on the local tab and notice there's no matching records found. So we're gonna say add local path and up here we get a whole bunch of helpful variables for different locations in the Linux file system. Where we wanna store our backups are var spool asterisk backup. So that's the folder that we're gonna create in the file store to tell asterisk or to tell FreeBBX, hey, this is where we wanna store our backup files. So path name, we're gonna call this local backup. For description, we can also call it local backup. And then path is going to be our variable for the spool directory. Again, this variable basically points to var spool asterisk, and then we can say slash backup like that. Okay, so now we have var spool asterisk backup. And by the way, in the variables, this is underscore underscore. So if you're ever using variables in free PBX, it is surrounded on the front and the back by two underscores. It's not one underscore, it's two. So let's submit that location. And we have now created a local file store location. And again, I want to reiterate this because it's very, very important also set up some other type of offsite backup. When we set up backups for our clients, uh, both our hosted PBX customers and our on-premises PBX customers, we set up a local backup as well as an offsite FTP backup to one of Crosstalk's FTP servers, uh, just so that we have that spare copy in case anything goes wrong at any point in the future. For the purposes of this video though, we're just gonna set up the local file store location and backup free PBX to the local drive. All right, so we've set up our file store. The next thing that we have to do is set up the backup and restore module and actually create up create our backup job. Uh, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by our Crosstalk Solutions turnkey hosted or on-premises PBX services. If you're looking for a technology partner to help painlessly transition you to a brand new PBX, 
then look no further than Crosstalk Solutions. We offer full turnkey PPX installations where we work with you on the design of the system, perform a complete setup and test of the PBX and all equipment, and then ship everything to you ready for plug and play installation. Once you receive the equipment, we'll guide you through the transition to the new system, provide user guides and training material for your users, provide administrative training for your administrators, and we also include 30 days of post-deployment support with no ongoing monthly maintenance fees. We will also ensure to set up your PBX with best practice carries law and Raybomb Act compliant E911 emergency dialing, as well as guide you through the phone number porting process if you're switching phone service carriers. We have truly designed our turnkey PBX process to be as painless as possible because we know that switching PBX systems can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be when you choose Crosstalk Solutions for your voice over IP needs. So check out CrosstalkSolutions.com for more information on our turnkey PBX packages. And when you're ready to get started, just fill out the contact form on our website or email info at CrosstalkSolutions.com for a custom quote within one business day. All right, now back to the video. Okay, thank you so much for that. Now let's pop over to Admin, Backup and Restore. And so here we have a few tabs. We've got backup, which is to create backups. We've got restore, which is if you want to upload a file for restoring onto FreePBX. One thing that I should note about the restore is that in FreePBX version 15, the backup restore module was completely rewritten. Previous versions of FreePBX, if you backed up on like FreePBX 14, you had to restore onto FreePBX 14. You, there was no sort of cross version backup and restore. However, with version 15, you can back up on version 12, 13, 14, etc., and then restore that backup file onto FreePBX 13, uh, 15, and it actually works pretty well. So now with FreePBX 15, we have the ability to restore from older versions of FreePBX. If we click on global settings, this just shows us our public key. Not really useful for what we're doing. So let's go back to the backup tab and we're gonna click add backup. When we back up for our customers, we typically do a monthly backup and then save three of those and then a weekly backup and save three of those. So we basically have three monthly backups and three weekly backups just in case we need them. In this video, we're just gonna set up a monthly backup and, uh, and that should be good enough, but obviously the more backups you have, the better, and certainly you wanna make sure, as I've said before, to have those offsite backups. Okay, so for the backup name, we're just gonna call this monthly backup. We'll also give that same name for the description. For the backup items, this is where you can select which free PBX modules you wanna back up. In most cases, you just wanna back up everything. So unless you know what you're doing, I wouldn't touch this setting, just leave all modules selected. And then if you wanna add some custom files, you can do that here as well, again, using those same variables. So some custom folders that you might wanna back up are like your, uh, your custom sounds directory. If you've created a bunch of system recordings for free PBX, we haven't gotten to that yet in this series. Uh, or perhaps the TFTP folder, if you wanna save all of your backup, uh, you know, your phone configurations as well as the phone firmwares and stuff like that. So there are some cases where you might wanna add some custom files to your backup, uh, but for our purposes, we're just gonna leave this default. Now, if we scroll down to notifications email, this allows us to put in a notification if a backup is successful or if it fails, uh, or both. So we're gonna say info at crosstalksolutions.com. We're gonna turn on inline logs, and what that does is when it emails us to say a backup has been completed or a backup has failed, it's gonna put the log of what actually happened as the body of the email so that we can actually see what happened. And then we have the email type. Do we wanna email just on success, just on failure, or both? So what I would suggest here is start with both until you know that backups are working successfully on a regular basis. And then what we typically do is we switch it to failure only. Because honestly, if a backup is successful, I don't need to be notified, right? I only want to be notified if there's a problem. And so that's why we typically set it up as failure only, which we're going to do in this case. Now for storage location, we're going to select our local backup. That's the one that we just created in the file store. If you've also created a Dropbox location or an FTP location or an S3 location or something like that, those options are also gonna show up in this drop-down list. 
So we've selected our local backup. I'm also going to click yes for append backup name as a directory to the storage path. So our storage path is var spool asterisk backup. And then this backup job is going to also append the name of the backup job, which I think we called it like monthly backup or something. It'll append that underneath the backup folder. So var spool asterisk backup monthly backup. The reason that you want to do that is just for organization. If you have multiple backups that you're running, like a monthly backup and a weekly backup, uh, this just helps keep those organized into their own separate subfolders. So now for schedule and maintenance, we do want to run this once a month. So we're going to say yes. And the scheduling is going to be every month. And we're going to pick the first day of the month. Down here for maintenance, we want to delete after runs. So what this means is after X number of runs, so after X number of successful backups, we're going to delete the oldest one. In my case, I'm going to bump this up to three. So that's going to keep three months worth of backup. And then once we do a new backup after three months, the oldest one is deleted. So I basically have th three months worth of monthly backups all taken on the first of the month. If you set this to zero, it'll never delete any of your backups. Same thing down here, delete after days. So I could say instead of, you know, after every three runs, I could say delete anything older than 90 days or 120 days or something like that. So in my case, I'm just going to delete after three runs and then we're going to leave days unlimited. Down here we have hooks. This is advanced stuff. Typically you're not going to put anything here, but if there was anything that you wanted to run before, or after a backup, uh, that's where you would put those scripts in here. An example would be if, for instance, you are backing up to a USB connected hard drive on your on-premises server, you might want to put a pre-backup hook that basically makes sure that drive is mounted before the backup runs. Um, and so just, just one example of the many things that you could do with the pre and post backup and restore hooks. Finally, we have the warm spare setting down below. Again, we're not going to cover warm spare in this tutorial series. Uh, so we're just going to leave that no and we're going to click save. All right, so we've now created our monthly backup. Let's go ahead and run it. We're going to click the play button here. And we can see that the backup module is doing all sorts of stuff. Essentially what it's doing here is it's taking all of our free PBX modules and it's combining them all together. And since we don't have a lot of information in this PBX yet, it didn't take that long and it said the backup was completed. So what we can see here is it finished. So finished cleaning up and then it finished creating the backup file. Uh, and this is going to be the date and timestamp, the version, and then tar.gz, right? So this is basically where we can go check for our file. If we did everything right, it should be in var spool asterisk backup monthly backup. So let's go check that now. So if I cd slash var spool asterisk, let's take a look in here. There's our backup folder. So we'll say cd backup. And there we have our monthly backup folder. And inside we have our backup, which is 53 megabytes. So the backup without any information in FreePBX with very little configuration done is about 53 megabytes uh, per backup file. But I've seen that get very, very big depending on how much stuff uh, you're actually backing up in free PBX. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that. Now, if we wanted to restore, we could come over here to restore and notice that we already have our monthly backup right here. So this is the backup, since, it, since free PBX knows our file store location, it can look in those locations for any available backups. And then we can just click uh, play to restore that particular backup file if we need it. So any of your monthly scheduled backups should show up in this restore section right here. Okay, so there you have it. That is how you backup and restore in free PBX. Again, very, very, very important. Create your backups. At the minimum, you want a local backup, but a local backup, again, if your hard drive crashes, your local backups are gone, right? So you also want to have an offsite backup as well. Uh, we like to do, again, monthly backups, three instances of monthly backups, three instances of weekly backups, and then local as well as offsite. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. In our next video, we are actually going to start adding extensions to free PBX. So we're finally gonna start digging into the meat of this thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for more videos like this, and we will see you in the next one.